What's up guys, my name's Brandon and after using iOS 18 for a couple of months now, I wanted to share my personal favorite features so far. Now Apple will be adding several new features in the coming months and that's why you should subscribe to the channel so you can be informed when those new features get released. But for now, let's get into my favorite iOS 18 features so far. First up is icon customization, specifically on a per wallpaper basis. So now in iOS 18, if you tap and hold on the home screen and go to edit in the top left and then go to customize, you get the option to change your icons on your home screen. So this is what it looked like in iOS 17. It looks really bad now after seeing how good the icons look dark in iOS 18. So look at the difference there. You can also do automatic. So it changes from light to dark mode based on the day. And you can also tint the icons with a different color a different shade of color of your choosing you can even change the opacity or the saturation for that shade and you also have the option to choose large app icons and that will eliminate the app text underneath which is really nice but i prefer small and you can also change the background if you want it to be light or dark right there now when i mention on a per wallpaper basis what i mean is that if you go to your lock screen and switch to a different wallpaper you will notice that the app icons are different and that's because you can have these set up to change and they kind of stick with the wallpaper so for instance if we had a wallpaper that had like really tinted icons that went with the background let's just make these like purple i like how this looks with this specific wallpaper and that means that even if i go to change to another wallpaper and i mess around with the you know customization settings here and i make these light i can go back to that previous wallpaper and you'll notice that my customization settings stick with that wallpaper which is great for customization and speaking of customization also with ios 18 you can customize the lock screen shortcut icons so down here we have our lock screen shortcuts now with ios 18 you can customize this with several different options you can open up an app you can put it to airplane mode dark mode you can have your apple tv remote you can customize the icons on the lock screen and these also stick with each wallpaper and also an underrated feature here is that you can eliminate both of those shortcut icons for a really clean looking lock screen just like this and if you want to get this wallpaper and a bunch of other retro wallpapers this is part of my rewind wallpaper pack which i released a while back i'll leave that linked down in the description below my next favorite feature is a small one but a good one and that is that we now have voicemail transcriptions as notifications when you get a missed call and a voicemail so instead of needing to go into the phone application to view the transcript it's now right here on your lock screen so this next feature is one that i think is going to change the game when it comes to helping out your grandparents with their issue on their iphone and that is share play remote control so now when you're on a facetime call and somebody shares their screen with you you can now take over control of their display and perform the action for them so for example you can see that the person on the other end of the phone started sharing their screen so i can go into it right here and you'll notice that we have this option now to tap and draw in screen sharing so let's go out of here so we can go to the home screen so from here we have some options let's get rid of this right here so down here in the bottom right we have this option so if we tap on that it says remote control and the other person has to accept that so you'll see this pop up and if you tap on allow you now have remote control into the other person's phone so if I go into settings, for example, you can see I'm controlling the other person's phone. And again, I can perform that action for them instead of having to talk them through it. Now, again, you can also draw on their screens. So you don't need to take full control of it. And you can just do that from this view in here. You could just start drawing and the other person will see that on their phone and it disappears after a couple of seconds next up we have a pair of changes in the podcast application so number one when you start scrubbing on a podcast and they have chapter markers you will now see the chapter marker above where you're scrubbing so not only does it show the timestamp but it also shows the title of that specific chapter which is very handy also if you tap on the ellipses right here and go to share episode you now get the option to share the episode from a specific point in time so you can see you can send it 
from the exact part that you were at. Now, easily one of my favorite features in all of iOS 18 is the ability to lock and hide applications natively. So we've been trying to lock applications for the longest time with so many different random workaround methods and shortcuts, but now it's baked into iOS 18. So all you have to do is tap and hold on any app icon on your home screen, and you'll see a new option that says require face ID. And if you tap on that, you'll get the option to require face ID or hide the application and also require face ID. So if we just do require face ID, it will just lock that and you can see the little animation up top. And now anytime we try to go into that, it will require face ID. And if you choose hide and require face ID, this will scan your face and then hide the application and you will get a little pop up right there. And you will now see it in your app library all the way down here in the hidden section. Now this next one is going to be on everybody's list for favorite features in iOS 18 and that is Safari distraction control. So now if you're on a web page and you get annoyed by something on it and you want to hide it, you can now do that. So all you have to do is tap on the icon in the address bar and go to hide distracting items and simply select what you do not like on that web page. So for example, if I don't like this section right here where it shows a bunch of featured articles and not the latest, I wanna go ahead and hide that. And we can Thanos snap that out of there with that cool animation. We can hide this little add it pop up right here we could tap this little space in the header we can remove that and now tap on done and if we refresh the page every time we go to mac rumors it's only going to show me the latest articles and i can continue scrolling down next up is a feature that i use pretty much every day and that is notes audio recording and transcription so if you go into the notes app and you tap on the paperclip icon we have a new option for record audio if you tap on that you get this very voice memos like interface where you can record yourself talking and we have this little annotation icon right here so we can see the transcript in real time so you can disable that and it will just go back right here you could also go out of here you can even lock your phone and it will continue recording as you can see from the microphone icon right up here in the dynamic island it's all going on right here we could tap into here and pause and now if we go back to done and we tap on it you will see the transcription of what you recorded and i've noticed that this works pretty well if you're using your built-in microphone on your iphone but it doesn't work the best with airpods especially if you have a lot of background noise next up we have the new calendar ui so the calendar application in ios 18 gets the upgrade i've been hoping for for a long time so now in the calendar application you can simply pinch with your fingers to make the month view larger. So you can do this in different views, but I find this to be the most useful in the month view because now you can see your different reminders and your different events better. And it's not just a little dot on the date. And you heard me right, reminders are now built in to the calendar application as well. And you can see those right there. If we tap on the gray, it will show that we have that reminder. It's integrated now with the calendar, which is another awesome integration and awesome feature in iOS 18. Next up is a small one, but now in the photos application, when you play a video, it loops by default. So anytime a video ends, especially if it's a short video, it will now loop automatically, which is something I didn't realize I needed until I installed iOS 18. Also in the photos application, I'm a big fan of the new filtering options. So now if you tap on the up arrow and down arrow in the bottom left, you get multiple options. So one of my favorites is actually under view options and from here you have the ability to hide all screenshots or show screenshots so it's showed by default so it shows all your screenshots by default but if you want to find a photo and you want to you know not see all the screenshots you've taken you could just tap on that and now you can see it only shows photos that are not screenshots also when you go to filter right here you can filter by just screenshots if you would like to without having to go into a separate album you can do the same for favorites photos videos and edited my next favorite feature is inside of the messages application so not only do we now have rcs support so you can now text 
Android users without having so many issues. So you can see red receipts, you can see when they're typing, your media sends in full quality. So RCS is now available on the iPhone with iOS 18, but also you can now have more options for tap back reactions. So now if you go to tap back on a message, you can see that you have all of the original tap back menu items, except for their color now, but you also have different emojis and you could also send a sticker as a reaction. So if you tap right here on the emoji icon, you can see you have your different stickers right here and you can react to messages with any emoji you would like. And I had to separate this one as my next favorite in iOS 18, and that is the ability to send later. So you can now schedule iMessages. So this only works for iMessage. This does not work for text messages or RCS on Android. This only works when texting another iPhone user or another, you know, iMessage user. So I can say, you know, happy birthday. If somebody's birthday is in two weeks, and I don't want to forget to send that. I can now do that. So you could tap right here to choose the date and the time. And again, this goes up to two weeks in advance. And the best part about this is that your phone can be turned off and the message will still send because this is stored in the iMessage servers. Now, something that might seem small on the surface, but you'll notice is a big deal after using iOS 18 for a while is the complete review vamp to the settings application. So settings now shows a lot more of the important items near the top. So for example, battery is up here in the top section. We now have the camera way up that used to be way down in iOS 17 control center. You know, we have all these much higher up than they were in iOS 17. And also if you scroll all the way down, you'll notice that we now have a separate section for apps. So you don't have to just keep endlessly scrolling. If you have a bunch of applications on your device and now has its own separate section, and you could also search in here as well. And I'm going to include this as well. So the iCloud page in settings has been completely revamped and it looks so much better than it did in iOS 17. So it looks more modern and everything is a lot easier to understand here. And while we're in settings, my next favorite feature is inside of the battery section and settings. And if we go into charging, we now have the option to change our charge limit from 80 to 100%. So before we could set this to only charge to 80%, but that was it. It was either 100 or 80. Now you get a more granular, you know, control. You get more granular control over where you want to charge your battery to. So I opt to choose for 90%, but you now have flexibility there. Next up is the new flashlight in iOS 18. So if you go ahead and activate your flashlight, we now have this massive animation here in the dynamic island and you can see that we have this different view. So what's cool about this, it's not just the looks that are cool. So yeah, the looks are cool, the animation is cool, it's very fluid, it's very awesome, but you can see that it's also controlling, you can change the beam of your flashlight and kind of how far out it goes. You could also change the brightness by going up and down right here. So you have a lot more control over the flashlight on your iPhone now with iOS 18. And this is actually very useful. You have to use this a few times to understand how useful it is, but it's pretty awesome. Now you guys know I couldn't make this video without talking about the control center. So next up is going to be the completely revamped control center in iOS 18. So where do I even begin? Everything has changed here. So if you go ahead, I mean, just the look of everything, you can see that everything looks different. We have circles now instead of the, you know, kind of of square or ovals that we had in iOS 17. And if you tap and hold right here, you get the option to basically maneuver any of these around straight from the control center instead of going into settings to change around the order. And you have add control right here. So you can add any of these different controls to your control center. So these range anything from like your basic connectivity settings all the way down to accessibility settings like color filters and, you know, vehicle motion cues, reduced motion, all of that you can add as a control center toggle. And we also have multiple pages as well. So this is where I can show you kind of how we can tweak these. You can change the size of these very easily right here inside of the control center again without having to go into settings and it's all very fluid and very smooth now. This had issues in earlier betas, but now it's pretty smooth right here. So that's awesome. We have different pages, different controls as well for our music right here. We have a whole separate page for our home kit devices. So instead of taking up space on your control center, like an iOS 17, we now have a whole separate page 
for HomeKit. And then all the way down here at the bottom, we have a dedicated connectivity page as well. So extreme customizability here. I am loving this. Pretty much everybody's setup for the control center looks different. So this really brings a great amount of customizability to the iPhone. There's also a kind of hidden feature in here up in the top right. We now have the option to shut down our iPhone. And then my final favorite feature in iOS 18 is the calculator application as a whole. So I'm not going to go too in depth here. I did make a whole separate video on the calculator app, which I will leave in the cards and down in the description. But I really love how you can now see the full expression even after you tap on the equal sign so you can see where you were. And you could also tap right there to go back in. And if you wanted to change something, you can do that without having to redo the entire you know expression or equation all over again. You also have your history if you tap right here you can see your history from today or the previous 30 days you have a conversion built in so you have a conversion calculator built in right here as well where you can convert pretty much anything that you can think of you have a scientific calculator in portrait mode now and we also have math notes which is the feature where you can kind of write out the math problems and it will solve it in your own handwriting that's more so for ipad os 18 but you can also do it in ios 18 if you would like but the calculator app in general is just so much better here in ios 18 than it's ever been and i do also have one final bonus feature that i wanted to mention because it's just that good and that is iphone mirroring in mac os sequoia so if you have an iphone on ios 18 and you also have a mac that's running the latest mac os sequoia you can now mirror your phone to your Mac. So this has completely eliminated while I'm working, like completely eliminated me picking up my phone. Like I just don't even pick up my phone anymore because I can just control it on my Mac. This has been a game changer for me when I'm working from home. And I think that you just absolutely need to try this out because it's just that good. And I didn't include it in my main list because it does require a Mac. So it's not technically just iOS 18, but trust me, if you have a Mac, you need to try this. So those are my favorite features in iOS 18 so far. Again, Apple will be releasing a lot more new features in the coming months, including Apple intelligence and a lot more. So make sure you keep it locked to the channel. Make sure you are subscribed. Double check down below. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out and you will see those iOS 18 features before anybody else. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.